Hey guys, my name is Lucas and welcome back to the studio. So today we are going to collaborate with my friend from the other YouTube channel called Speak Up, which is also a music production channel. So in this video we will be making six tips in FL Studio where I will share three of my tips and he will be sharing three of his tips. Make sure to go watch Speak Up's six tips video as well when you have watched this. In that video he will be sharing three more tips and I will also be sharing three more tips in that video. So 12 tips in total in two videos. I will be linking his video down below, but let's get going in FL Studio. Okay guys, so here we are in FL Studio. Let's get going. So the first tip I want to share with you is how to make a sidechain happen with a ghost kick. A ghost kick is basically just an ordinary kick which you don't send to the master but you sidechain it to a certain sound. For instance, this wave synth right here. And I have this kick going on. And I want the wave synth to be side chained whenever the kick hits. So what we want to do is to take the kick and remove it from the master and side chain it to this track where we have the sound. So now you can hear the kick. What you want to do next is to find a limiter on the wave synth. The fruity limiter and you want to go to the compression, right click on the sidechain and find the kick. Now you can lower the threshold and raise the ratio. And to get the sidechain that you are looking for you can always adjust the curve, the attack and the release. And the great thing about sidechaining this way is that you can control the amount of sidechaining with this fader right here. And that was how to sidechain with a ghost kick. Hello, this is Speak Up, and my first tip is a really cool way that you can get around compressing your vocals. So, where you would normally just load on a compressor of some sort right here, what I'm gonna do is actually do something called parallel compression. Some of you might know it, but I'm sure some of you don't. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my vocal track here. I'm gonna uh, select route to this track, not to this track only, because I want it to be split both to the master and to a parallel processing uh, track. So right now the vocal is getting into the number one and going to the master and also to a parallel compression here and then back to the master. So what I'm actually gonna do is actually completely over compress the parallel compression. I could use something like OTT, but I'm gonna, just for this demo, I'm gonna use limiter. This is the normal limiter. That's not the normal limiter. The fruity limiter, there it is. So in the limiter tab, I'm just gonna go to compression, the threshold way down and the ratio almost like it's a limiter. Now to hear only the compressed signal, I'm actually just gonna detach the main signal from the master. Don't consider the odds or the sound of a closing door. As you can hear, this vocal is really, really, really compressed. But that's perfect, that's what we're going for. So what I'm gonna do very quick is just reconnect the uh, main signal to the master, then I'm gonna go to the compression, fade it out, and then Play the, uh, play the vocal and then just add the compression to whatever level I feel like. Not a chance, but yourself that you're waiting for. The future is calling. You don't have to feel brave. Your fortune is constant, but your side tends to sway. So you want to get the compression to a point where it doesn't sound compressed but it sounds confident if you know what i mean the future is calling you don't have to feel brave your fortune is constant but your side tends to sway so what this method actually allows us to do is to enjoy the pros of compression uh getting more confidence in the vocal and uh, being able to hear every word clearly but also actually pretty much avoiding the cons of compression. You don't get this really, how do I explain? The over compressed sound that we all know and hate. I should say any other effects you wanna put in the vocal goes to the main signal. Uh, this is done, you can basically lock this one. <laughs> you don't need it anymore. So all your reverb and stuff goes here. The next tip I want to share with you is how to make reverb a part of your sound design. So 
First of all, we are going to be using this wave synth again, but we will be removing the limiter, so we don't have any side chaining going on for now. We will add it in back later. So the wave synth by itself sounds like this. And then we want to add a reverb to it. Let's just take the fruity reverb too. So what you want to do is to lower the decay time as much as possible. But then you want to raise the wet volume. And to really hear the reverb you need to make it kind of different from the ordinary sound, so we want to modulate it. And this gives it some sort of chorus effect, I'll say. So this is fine by itself, but if you add in the limiter, you know, the, the side chain, you will get this effect. And what you can do is to raise the wet and raise the decay time as well. But when you raise the decay time, it is very important to also low cut the reverb, otherwise everything will just get muddy. And you can also raise the high cut as well. And I would also stereo separate the reverb a bit. So you can get this kind of flying in the air effect, you know, it's really dreamy, it's really atmospheric and really wide and really loud. So that was how you can use reverb as part of the sound design. Alright, so I think that my next tip is gonna save you guys so much time. So the problem is that every time you go to load anything, plugins or effects, VSTs, whatever, you're presented with this. <laughs> A giant list of everything. Uh, I know this, they kind of try to categorize everything. It, it doesn't work, okay? It, it's, it's horrible. I hate it. What you're gonna do is that you're gonna collect your top five, top three, top nine, whatever, and you're gonna rename them. I'm gonna show you how, and then I'm gonna tell you why. So for my little demo, I'm gonna use TDR Nova, Span, uh, let's take OTT as well. I think that that will get you uh, going. What I'm gonna do is actually head to the browser. Then I'm gonna search for TDR Nova, it is right here. Now right click it. Wait, 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 wait. I was editing this and I realized that you could not see what I was doing. I had to record this again. Okay, what I was doing, I was right clicking uh, TDR Nova, uh, the plugin that I wanted to rename. I went to Windows PowerShell, then Properties, and this is the window that you're gonna use to rename the plugin. Stuff like this happens. Anyways, let's continue. Now I'm gonna do it with OTT as well. The OTT is right here. Same thing, right click, Windows Shell menu, properties. I'm gonna put it on, let's say three. I'm gonna put that on three. And for the last one, I'm gonna do it with, I said span, I'm gonna do it with kickstart instead. <laughs> and I'm gonna put that to number two. So they are not really in the order that you would expect. <laughs> let's say I want uh, OTT on my vocal. I just click here, OTT, that was number three. I'll just click three and there it is. Let's say I want kickstart, oh, two, what? Well, kickstart. Oh, I want, uh, what was the last one I used? Nova, I just click and then click uh, uh, one. It is, it is super fast. Of course, you could go in and just, you know, tap the first letter like T and then there we go, TDR Nova, that was pretty quick too. The thing is, if you're still on the stock plugins, pressing F, that will basically cycle you through every fruity plugin because someone thought it was a good idea to call them all fruity something. So they all start with the same letter. Not anymore, because you can rename them to get kind of almost like hotkeys for your plugins. It's, it's beautiful. <laughs> the next tip is how to make a pre-shifted clap. So an ordinary clap will sound like this. And a pre-shifted clap is kind of where the clap fades in on itself before it really hits. So you want to take the clap and clone it. You want to reverse it, and then you want the sample to start early, like this. And put it right in the front of the other clap. Just like that. And then you have a pre-shifted clap. And what is really nice, if you take an ordinary clap just like this, let's just make it smaller so we can work with it. just like that and then you have this kind of cool effect which sounds amazing and that is basically a pre-shifted clap so my last tip is just getting that perfect take 
whenever you're recording anything. So it could be a guitar, piano, your voice, anything really. So here I have uh, like eight different takes of me playing the guitar. It sounds like that. As you can hear, there are imperfections. This right here, for example. It doesn't sound that good. That one is too fast. Also, by the way, pardon my uh, <laughs> my amplifier. I think it's getting out of battery. It sounds kind of distorted. <laughs> anyway, so the first thing that I'm going to do is actually just press C on my keyboard or this one up here. Then I'm going to uh, hold shift. Then I'm going to hold right click and just select all this. Whoop, and there we go. And then from here, there we go. So there seems to have been a slight delay on my recording from my metronome. Uh, so everything is just a tiny bit of beat actually. So I'm just going to hold shift and then scroll to reposition everything. So now what I'm going to do is again press the C like the cut tool. And then I'm going to cut everything up into these different bits of the melody. That could be one part. Hold shift and then left click this time so we don't delete anything. And here could be a part. You can also hold uh, alt to kind of get more precise in here of course so i'm also gonna add on a crossfade to get rid of the harsher um cuts that i've made i don't think there's a quick way of doing this so uh, yep this is all manual what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use uh, this tool right here press t on your keyboard and then i'm gonna mute all of these there we go and now what i get to do is just cherry pick whatever i like to get the perfect take so now i've selected every part from the take that I like the most and I got the perfect take. Well pretty much. With more takes and a bit more practice, a bit more time maybe, uh, you could of course make this perfect take even more perfect. This is more of just a demonstrational purpose. Somewhere along those lines. Still, you can go in and actually uh, shift scroll to get your timings a bit more right. Anyways, I, I think that was my last tip. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, guys, that was my three tips and speak ups three tips in this video. Again, make sure to go watch his video as well. I will be linking it down below. But other than that, make sure to comment if you have any questions, suggestions or anything like that. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. I will be making more videos like this in the future. Um, yeah, I'll see you. Goodbye.